Welcome back to another FNA about the most common animation mistakes and this time it's part four. I'm going to talk about spacing. All right, last week I talked about arcs and arcs and spacing kind of go hand in hand. It's all about the technical aspect and keeping your animation clean, but most of all, taking the time to do so. So it's not a specific thing of here's a trick to make the spacing better. It's just a lot of attention to detail and painstaking work of going and checking frame by frame. Of course, again, you can use all kinds of tools that you want to use. Motion trail, this dry erase marker, whatever you want to use. But the main thing is that you want to make sure that you don't have any random pops in your scene. So this does doesn't have to be about arcs, it's just any type of movement that you have. So if you have a person standing and kind of leaning in, having a moving hold, an arc, head turn, whatever you have. One of the most common things that I see, hence the title of the series, is that students have the animation where it's pretend there's an arm movement, it's going to a scene, I'll, I'll show you later. There's an arm movement and suddenly it's just there's some moments where it either pops up and goes down or suddenly you have a move and there's a big gap and then it continues moving. That's the stuff that I'm talking about and that's what you want to avoid. So again, it's just like with arcs, you got to go in there frame by frame and you got to take the time to do so. So let's take a look at one of my older scenes that I did a long time ago, 10 years ago. So if I play this scene, you can see that you have one character moving, you're gonna have the next character moving, there's no sound, I turn the sound off here. And you can see this is not just about a beautiful art, there is a bit of a tricky moment where you have a lot of movement and also camera movement. But let's just pick out a scene, for instance, with a head turn, right? So right here, the character looks around, this scene is 10 years old, I'm sure I'm gonna find all kinds of mistakes and I don't even know what I did here. All right, so I got a couple of keys here, so let's go crazy and you can already see here what I'm doing here, that is, what is that? Let's see, let's play this again. All right, so I try to be all fast and it's turn and you can see here, if you would check the uh, the tip of the nose, how it goes over to the right, right, right. Oh, it's only to the left. So to me, I will probably want to change that a bit and smooth that out. Again, this is just gonna be just to quickly show you what I mean here. So it has a little bit of a softer turn here. Now, specifically when it comes to spacing, now this is more a bit of a spacing in an arc moment. Of course, sometimes you do want to have a one frame change. And again, the one frame direction change is going to be part of another FNA. But let's say you have this turn. What I see, you want to ease out of that. What I sometimes see is that students will have something like this and maybe this frame. And then maybe it's actually, let's go right here. You want to ease out of that. And then this will be way over here. And then this, and maybe that, and maybe this one way over here. And then we're back here. So if you play this now, you see that pop up, pop up, very hiccupy, right there, very, very broken move. Let's take a look at what do we have here? Do we have anything with an arm swing without the camera move? Well, let's take this hand here, right? Looks like an IK. So whatever I did here, it moves back. So let's pretend I'm gonna go over here, over here, I'm gonna key this here. And let's say on this, there's a move all the way up to here. I'm not gonna change the wrist. Then go down here to this, and then maybe here over here. And uh, actually stays put, that would be a good example. So now if you play this back in real time, you can see that hiccupy factor here, right there. Now I'm exaggerating, but I do see every now and then scenes where, it's, where there's exactly that, where if you would track this here, with your marker, whatever you want to do here, you can see how arm goes up and the hand pops over the massively spacing pop here and then down and then what I have here, another pop here and then actually goes back the other way. So that's sometimes what I see in student shots here when I track this when, I, when I'm in class and I check this frame by frame. And this can be smaller things for let's say here. So let's continue with this hand. This hand is a bit of a moving hold. And let's say right here, I'm gonna do this and continue on. So when you play this, right there, see this? Right there. So that's that's the stuff I'm talking about where suddenly you have those moments where you come up and then just the hand kind of pops and that's something else. And if you go into the graph editor here, let's see here. There you go, look at that. Crazy town. What is going on? So if I open a student's scene, that's what I would see. I would see a crazy change and you can see the plateau and then you got your crazy 
spline bump and then you got that one frame pop that goes over there. So that's usually when I look at students' uh, curves, that's what I see. So whenever you have anything where it's subtle movement like on this character on the left side where it just kind of looks around. You have bigger movements on the one on screen right or just bigger actions like right now, especially like on, an, on an arm swing, if you look at this character's arm swing here, that's where I would do a lot of cleanup here. Again, this is total excuse here, 10 years old, but there's a lot of work I would do on this shot, especially here. I do kind of like that, that lift and that settle there, but there's still, if you see all, all, all shots of yours, all I can see is the mistake that I've done or the mistakes that I have done. But yes, so even like it's pretends this arm here, going up here, I would probably play more a bit more with that elbow and that hand because of spacing issues. But I mean, this would be an example where you go over here and then you pop maybe this way, then he goes back down. Even if something like, subtle like this, the arm goes up, right? I'm gonna actually delay this a little bit more. And then you see this here. Now you track that, right? If you go up, 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 and it suddenly pops over, then you can see how it's the same height. So you have that sudden pop and then staying put to the left. That's what I'm talking about. You want to make sure that these type of things are not in your scene. And again, this can be different for different scenes. Sometimes you have movements like in this one where you have a pigeon head that kind of pops around. Then the pop is there on purpose. You still kind of have to look at the ease ins and outs, but generally spacing goes hand in hand with you know, ease ins and outs. But generally speaking, you want to make sure that you have consistent spacing within a movement. So by consistent, I mean spacing that gives the impression of proper speed and action based on the character and acting and the movement and the intention and everything, right? So what you don't want to do is just like what I showed here where an arm is supposed to have an ease in and out or like in the shot where you got wing flaps and movement. So when you have like pigeon head moves like this, yes, you can have poppy moves, but still have kind of look at that. The, the momentum and the weight is not broken. Even in something light that pops around, you can't just go crazy with one frame direction changes, otherwise it looks like that character, whatever it is, just hits a wall all the time. But once the pigeon is in the air and flies around because of the style and the physics and with the, the flapping of the wings, then you gotta really look at the curves and the spacing so that when the character is propelling itself in the air and has hang time and falls, you can't just have an up movement and suddenly pops down and flies over. So you really have to look at the intent of the movement, the intent of your acting choice, because again, there are always exceptions where you can really pop into a move or pop out of a move, but then it's just more about breakdowns and again, kind of a, a storytelling thing. But again, I'm talking generally about cleanup of spacing in terms of how does your arm move into that arc? How does your head turn around? So it, it has that nice arc, it has that ease in, it has that hold, so you don't have moments where things just kind of pop around. Hope that makes sense. And it is totally boring. Just like tracking your arcs, checking the spacing, it's totally boring. You gotta go in there and loop things around and you either check it in your scene or have a movie open and loop and loop and loop and check your the arc of your wrist, you check the finger movements, you check stuff on the head or on the chest, you just kind of constantly have to double check, double check, double check and go frame by frame. And because this is something that takes time and effort and it's tedious and it's potentially super boring, it's also probably a reason why some people skip it or don't want to take that much time in order to make that work. They want to get in there, get into that performance and work on, on cool ideas, but you still have to go in there and clean up and polish your scene. And it's important that you get a, a grasp on of, of those principles because otherwise, if you have moments where a character suddenly pops around, especially if it's a bigger character, then the sense of weight is gone. And the overall believability of the movement of the character, again, the scale. So for me, you just can't skip that because if you don't have those fundamentals down, then why even attempt a performance, an acting piece, a lip sync, because all of your movements are going to be distracting and, and poppy. And you don't have to even worry about going down the line for lip sync and facial performance because you're base weight and the, just the main mechanics and the main believability of the weight of a character, the movement will be destroyed by not paying attention to your arcs or to your spacing like that I showed here and what this topic is for this clip. At the same time, it's not always easy to just kind of pay attention to all those little details. There's so much you gotta pay attention when you work on a shot. So if you need help and you want me to, I just have to laugh because I'm always pitching this at the end, but, but if you feel like this is helpful and you want help and you want me to help you with your shots and make your shots even more awesome. As always, I have workshops. Workshops are open. You can sign up at any time. That is my 
high pitch. Link in the description with all the information. And of course, if you like this, you can hit a like if you want. You can also subscribe if you want, because I do upload a lot. So if you want to subscribe, hit that bell button. You won't miss any of my uploads. Other than that, that is it. If you're still watching, thank you for your patience and watching till the very end. Other than that, I will see you in my next upload.